I was 12 going on 13, first time I saw a dead human being. It happened in the summer of 1959, a long time ago, but only if you measure in terms of years. I was living in a small town in Oregon called Castle Rock. There were only 1,281 people, but to me, it was the whole world. Hey, how do you know Frenchman's in your backyard? Hey, I'm French, okay? Your garden came with empty and your dog's pregnant. Things like just sales French. Ah, uh, crap. 29. 22. Piss up a rope. Oh, Gordy's out. Oh, Gordy just bit the bag and stepped out the door. Come on, man. Feel. <laughs> Teddy Duchamp was the craziest guy we had hung around with. He didn't have much of a chance in life. His dad was given fits of a rage. One time, he held Teddy's ear to a stove and almost burned it off. I'm not. You for a pile of crap. That pile of crap is a thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Come on, I've got three. What do you got? Six. <laughs> Keep on laughing. I'll turn you right down. Chris Chambers was the leader of our gang and my best friend. He came from a bad family, and everyone just knew it turned out bad, including Chris. Knock the secret knock. Forget the secret knock. Let me in. Come on, you guys. Open up. This is so unbelievable. You guys are not going to believe this. Just wait till you lose. I gotta catch my breath first. I went all the way from my house. I ran all the way home. Oh, no, oh, come on. Just say I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you now. Alright, guys, alright. What is it, man? Okay, great. You guys are not I ran all the way home. Screw you guys. What is it? I guys are going to camp out tonight. I mean, if you tell your folks that we're going to tent from my backfield. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you got to, man. Sincere. Can you go with it? Yeah, probably. So, what are you griping and moaning about, Bruno? What? Um, what? You a liar? You ain't got no pat hand. You didn't do something with pat hand. Make a draw, Rappy. Hey, do you guys want to go see a dead body? Well, what's big enough for it? We all understood what Vern meant right away. At the beginning of the school year, he had buried a quart jar of pennies underneath his house. He drew a treasure map so he could find them again. A week later, his mom cleaned out his room and threw away the map. <laughs> Bird had been trying to find those pennies for nine months. Nine months, man. He didn't yeah. know whether to laugh or cry. Yeah, I know the back Carlo Road. Close to dinner right by the Royal River. The train tracks are right there. But Daddy even used to fish for Cossies out there. Good lord, man. If they would have known you're under the door, they would have killed you. Could you really come from Chamberlain to Harlow? It's really far. Sure. You must have just started walking on the tracks and followed them all the way in. Yeah, yeah, right. And then after dark, the train must have come by. Oh, snap. Yeah, hey, hey guys. I've been anything. And if we find this kid, we'll get our pictures in the paper. Yeah, we're here on TV. Sure. We'll be heroes. Yeah. Billy will know how I found him. He's not gonna care, because it's gonna be us guys who find him. Not Billy and Charlie Hogan in a boosted car. They'll probably pin a medal on you, Vern. You think so? Sure. But then, so what are we gonna tell our folks? Exactly what you said. We all tell our folks that we're going out tending, <laughs> then we'll tell them that we're going out to drag races until dinner tomorrow night. It's a player and a half. But if we do find this kid's body down the side, Everybody will know that we didn't go through dragons. We'll get hired. No one will care, because everyone's going to be so jazzed about what we find. It's not going to make a difference. Yeah, my dad would hide me anyway. But hell, that's worth hiding. Hell oh, yeah. Let's do it. What do you say? All right. Gordy? Yeah. Vern? <laughs> Come on, Vern! <laughs> set out to find the body of a dead kid named Ray Brower. Hey Chris! Thanks a lot. Gordon! 
Hey, man. Hey, you want to see something? Sure what? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, you got to see this. Well, what is it? Come on, what is it? You want to be the Lone Ranger? Or the Cisco Kid? Sweet, walking, talking Jesus. Where'd you get that? <laughs> Pocket from my old man's bureau. It's a 45. I can see that. You got shells for it? Yeah, I took all that was left in the box. My dad would think he used some shooting beer cans when he was drunk. Is it loaded? Hell no. What do you think I am? Chopper, an austere and least seen dog in Castle Rock. 
Legend had it that Milo would train Chopper not just to sick, but to sick specific parts of the human anatomy. <laughs> Thus, a kid who had illegally scaled the junkyard fence might hear the dead cry, Chopper, sick balls. <laughs> Chopper nor Milo was anywhere in sight. Teddy's crazy. Come on, man, move up! Yeah. You don't look to be 20, I bet. Remember the time you saved him from the tree? Yeah. You know, sometimes I dream about that. Except in a dream, I always miss him. I just get a couple of hairs. Down he goes. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, that is weird. Chris Chambers never misses now, does he? Not even the ladies in the seat down. <laughs> hey, I'll race you. Uh, no. I don't know. Come on, man. Wait till the pump. I'm kind of tired. Go, go! You're a dead man! I can't look like a chance. Stop this time! Stop the chance beat! What's the chance beat?
It was only a quarter to three, but it felt much later. It was too hot and too much had happened. We weren't even close to the Royal River yet. We were going to have to get moving if we were going to make some real miles before dark. Hey, I got some Winston's. Hot come from an old man's dresser. Want a piece after supper? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's my cigarette and taste test. After supper. That's great. Do you think I'm weird? <laughs> Definitely. No, seriously, man. Do you think I'm weird? Yeah, but so what? Everyone is. Ready for junior high? Yeah. You know what that means. By next June, I'll be split up. What? Why would that happen? What do you mean? It's not gonna be like grammar school, that's why. You'll be taking college courses, and me, Hetty, and Vern will be taking the shop courses with the rest of the idiots making ashtrays and birdhouses. <laughs> gonna meet a lot of smart guys, Gordy. <laughs> gonna be a lot of panty waste, is what you mean. Don't say that. Not gonna be a lot of panty waste. Forget that. Well, then you're an idiot. What's idiotic about wanting to be with your friends? It's idiot if your friends drag you down. You hang with us, we'll just be another wise guy with crack on our hands. Hey, Teddy, do you think Mighty Moss would beat up Superman? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I saw the other day, he was carrying five elephants in one hand. You don't know nothing. Mighty Mouse is a cartoon character. Superman is a real guy. No way a cartoon character could beat up a real guy. Yeah, maybe you're right. It would be a good fight. You could be a real writer someday, Gordy. Uh, to hell with writing. I don't want to be a writer. That's stupid. It's a stupid waste of time. That's your dad talking. Bull crap. Bull true. I know how he feels about you. He doesn't care about you. Denny was the one he cared about. And don't try to tell me different. You're just a kid. Oh, gee. Thanks, Dad. I wish the hell I was. You wouldn't be going around talking about taking these stupid shop courses. It's like God gave you something, man. With all those stories you can make up, and he said, this is what we got for you, kid. Try not to lose it. But kids lose everything, unless there's someone there to look after them. And if your parents are too scrubbed to do it, then maybe I should. Hey, guys, let's get moving. Yeah, by the time we get there, the kid won't even be dead anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what an extra is doing? We can take the Route 136 route. What are you, crazy? That's five miles down the river. If we go five miles down the river, we got to come five miles back. That could take till dark. We cross here, be in the same place, ten minutes. But if the train comes, there's nowhere else to go. I race it. Jump. Hey, that's a hundred feet. Yeah, Teddy. Well, all you guys are dragging your candy asses halfway across the state and back. I'll be on the other side, relaxing with my thoughts. It's a shame you'll be all alone. You're a regular comic, aren't you, boy? jockeys for Hershey sports, will ya? <laughs> hey Gordo, why don't you tell us a story? Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on! Yeah, Gordo, you should tell us a story. But not any of your horses. I'm not up for no horses. How about Sergeant Stone and one of his battling leathernecks? Well, the one that I've been thinking about is kind of different. It's about this town pie eating contest, <laughs> and the main guy of the story is a fat kid that nobody likes named Davy Hogan. Oh, Charlie Hogan's brother? Yeah. Good, Vern. Come on, Gordy. Well, this kid's our age, but he's fat. Real fat. He weighs close to 180, but you know it's not his fault. It's his glands. Oh, yeah. I thought I could just like that. She weighs 300 pounds and says it's something to do with my glands. I don't know nothing about my glands, but what a blunt. No joke, he looks like a daisy in person. You know this one guy? Shut up, Vern. Yeah, yeah, right. Go on, man. It's a small story. Well, instead of calling him Davy Hogan, they call him Lardass. Lardass Hogan. <laughs> Even his little brother and sister call him Lardass. At school, they 
put a sticker on his back, and they ranked him out and beat him up whenever they got a chance. <laughs> but one day, he gets an idea. The greatest revenge idea a kid ever had. He enters the town pie eating contest. People are betting on Lardass, calling him things like Lardass, Wide Load, and Fatso. Even the mayor gets in on the fun, saying things like, we expect great things out of you, son. Really big things. <laughs> and everyone laughs. But what the audience didn't know is that Lardass wasn't really interested in winning. What he wanted was revenge, and right before he was introduced, he got ready for it. By the time he was eating his sixth pie, Lardass began to imagine that he wasn't eating pies. He pretended that he was eating cow flops and rackets and blueberry sauce. The crowd keeps going, Lardass, Lardass. Slowly, a sound starts to build in Lardass's stomach. A strange and scary sound that sounded like a log truck coming at you 100 miles an hour. Suddenly, Lardass opened his mouth, and before anybody knew it, he was covered with five pies worth of used blueberries. <laughs> the women in the audience screamed. Boss man Bob Cormier takes one look at Bill Travis and barfs on Principal Wiggins. And Principal Wiggins barfs on the lumberjack that was sitting next to him. And Mayor Grundy, he barfed on his wife's boobs. <laughs> But when the smell hit the crowd, that's when Lardass's plan really started to work. Girlfriends barfed on boyfriends, kids barfed on their parents, the fat lady barfed in her purse, the Don Ellie twins barfed on each other, and the women's auxiliary barfed all over the benevolent border of antelopes. <laughs> and what did Lardass do? He just sat back and enjoyed what he had created. A complete and total barf ram. Yeah! That was the best. Just the best. Yeah. What happened? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, what happened? What do you mean what happened? That's the end. <laughs> How can that be the end? What happened to Lawrence? I don't know. Maybe he went home and celebrated with a couple of cheeseburgers? <laughs> Jeez, that sucks. Why don't you make it that? Lardass goes home, and he shoots his fuck, and then he joins the Texas Rangers. How about that? <laughs> <coughs> Something good like that. Well, I like the end. The bar was really good. But there's still one thing I don't understand. Did Lardass have to pay to get into the conference? No. <laughs> they just let him in. Oh, wow. That was a great story. <laughs> yeah, Gordy, it was a good story. I just don't like the ending. Hey Vern, where's the radio? Let's see if we can get some sounds. Here. We talked into the night. Kind of talk that seemed important until you discover girls. All right. Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, and Pluto's a dog. But what is Goofy? You know, I used to have one food for the rest of my life. We'll be pets. Cherry flavored pets. No question about that. Goofy's a dog. He's definitely a dog. You know, I knew that 64,000 question was fixed. There's no way anybody can know that much about opera. He can be a dog. Wears a hat and drives a car. You know, Wagon Train's a really cool show, but have you ever noticed that they never get anywhere? They just keep on Wagon Train. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. But what the hell is Goofy? None of us mentioned Ray Brower, but we were all thinking about him. Oh my god. It's that Brower kid. His ghost is out walking in the woods. I promise, I'll have no dirty book. I promise, <laughs> I swear no more bad swear. I promise, I'll eat all my little beans.
Good night, guys. Good night, Fern. 2,300 hours. Corporal Teddy to shop stands guard. No sign of the enemy. The fort is secure. Shut up, Teddy. And keep your eyes peeled.
I don't know. He just fainted, guys. I've Marty. never met a person that fainted before. Maybe you made a mistake and looked at your face. Shut up, Penny. You all good, Gordy? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, maybe you should head Gordy back. Oh, great, Chambers. Now you're turning into a panty waist, too. What's your problem, dude, champ? He had a leech hanging from his balls. He fainted. <laughs> you and his mother eat dirt. You eat dirt. Hey, hey, I think Chris is right. Maybe we should take Gordy back. The king of panty wastes wants to go back, too. <laughs> Hey, don't call me that. Well, Pennyways. Stop it. Pennyways. Stop it. You fight. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm not going back. <coughs> Shut up, stupid. At the time, I didn't know why I needed to see that body so badly. Even if no one had followed me, I would have gone on alone. Coming through the woods, but we saved over an hour. Teddy? Yeah. This is the back Harlow Road? Yeah. Briar kid must be around here someplace. Teddy, you and Vern take the left side. Me and Gordy will take the right. Okay. Oh, I see him! He's right there! Oh! Oh! None of us can breathe. Somewhere under those bushes was the rest of Ray Brower. The train had knocked Ray Brower out of his kids, just like it had knocked the life out of his body. Jesus, Lord Almighty. The kid wasn't sick, the kid wasn't sleeping, the kid was dead. Hey, let's look for some long branches. Let's see if we can build him a stretcher. Okay. Why did he have to die? Hey, what's wrong with Gordon? Nothing. Why don't you guys just go look for some long branches? Alright. Why did he have to die, Chris? Why did Denny have to die? I don't know. It should have been me. Don't say that. It should have been me. Don't say that, man. My dad hates me. He doesn't hate you. My dad hates me. He doesn't hate you. He just doesn't no, know you. My dad hates me. My dad hates me. Listen, Gordy, you could be a great writer someday. You can even write about us guys if you ever get hard up for materials. Guess I have to be really hard up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll find some branches. You guys want to take it? No. But we came all this way. We're supposed to be heroes. Not this way, Teddy. Chris, give me a hand. Ray Brower's body was found. Vern's brother and his gang showed up too at the same time we were putting the stretcher together and all but beat us to a pulp. We fought hard, but they were just so much bigger than us that neither our gang nor their gang got the credit. In the end, we decided that an anonymous phone call was the best thing to do. We headed home. And although many thoughts raced through our minds, we barely spoke. We walked through the night and made it back to Castle Rock a little past five o'clock on Sunday morning, the day before Labor Day. It had only been gone two days. Somehow the town seemed different, smaller. Hey guys, I gotta go. See you guys in junior high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Penny. <laughs> well, I get her, I better get going before my mom puts me on the ten most wanted list. Hey, Chris. No hard feelings. Never, no, man. As time went on, we saw less and less of Teddy and Vern until eventually they became just two more faces in the halls. That happens sometimes. Friends come in and out of your life like busboys in a restaurant. I heard that Vern got married out of high school, had four kids, and is now the forklift operator at the Arsenal Lumberyard. Teddy tried several times to get into the army, but his eyes and his ear kept him out. The last I heard, he'd spent some time in jail. He was now doing odd jobs around Castle Rock. I'm never gonna get out of here, am I, Gordy? You do whatever you want, man. Yeah, all right, give me some stamps. All right, I'll see you. Now, if I see you first. Chris didn't get out. He enrolled in the college courses with me, and although it was hard, he gutted it out like he always did. He went on to college and eventually became a lawyer. Last week, he entered a fast food restaurant. 
Just ahead of him, two men got into an argument. One of them pulled a knife. Chris, who would always make the best piece, tried to break it up. He was stabbed in the throat. He died almost instantly. Although I haven't seen him in more than 10 years, I know I'll miss him forever. I never had any friends later on like the ones I had when I was 12. Jesus, does anybody? <laughs>